Many people like to joke that there's a little FBI agent living in their phone, watching them, following them, tracking their actions, or that we're always being spied on by the government. The birds aren't real. They're dropping chemicals from the jet trails. Conspiracy theories are fun, but what if they're real? Americans have been subject to counterintelligence by the government more than once. It's not that uncommon for the government to tap our phones and get involved in our lives without us even knowing. This happened in a very prominent way, in, in a very destructive way in the 1970s to American actress Jean Seberg. Jean was the it girl at the time. She was Hollywood's number one woman. The little Midwestern girl, all grown up, playing all big movie roles. She even had an affair with Clint Eastwood. She was the golden sunflower of America. But this dream, this Hollywood movie, came to a crushing end. With all of her power and influence, Jean was able to set trends. She was the it girl at the time. Everyone wanted to be her, do what she did, follow in her footsteps. She decided to take this power and use it for activism. Jean got involved with the civil rights activist group, the Black Panthers. She supported them financially and with, volunteered her time. At the time, the Black Panthers were considered to be a, an extreme and violent group dedicated towards civil rights. Jean was so involved, it was rumored she had had an affair with the leader of this group. Now, the Black Panthers were not popular in American politics, and specifically, the American government was not a fan of them. The counterintelligence program was an, an FBI program founded in 1956 by J. Edgar Hoover, the creator of the FBI, um, with the sole goal of discrediting organizations that they deemed a threat to American stability. This could be anyone and anything that they decided was violence, and they essentially waged psychological warfare on the subjects deemed threatening. The counterintelligence program targeted extremist groups like the KKK, Nazi parties, and the Black Panther. Seberg's donations and activism and support and even room and relationship with the head of the Black Panthers made her a target of this counterintelligence program. The FBI decided to turn the media, which once loved her, created her success to be the thing that caused her downfall. In April of 1970, the FBI was granted permission to publicize a private piece of Jean's life. They leaked her pregnancy. They thought that, quote, the possible publication of Seberg's plight could cause her embarrassment and serve to cheapen her image with the general public, unquote. They did everything they could to discredit Jean, and they found out this crazy private thing that she was pregnant by tapping her phone and by constant surveillance. Her suspicions were confirmed when an LA gossip columnist leaked this story. However, when they leaked her pregnancy, they didn't include a name for the father. They just said that it possibly could be a prominent member of the Black Panther movement. Now, at this time, interracial couple, couples were a no-no for any, even the most progressive people weren't in support of this. And this ruined Seberg's uh, entire reputation. The fact that she could possibly be carrying a member of a different race's baby was unacceptable to the public. And they really, and the government succeeded in discrediting her entirely. After reading this story, it, Jean cracked. She actually, she went a little crazy. She even... Uh, went into premature labor with the child. Um, the child died two, it was so premature that the child died two days after delivery. Jean's life was completely derailed. Her child had died. She decided to take her infant back home um, and to, ho to Iowa to hold a public funeral for the child. The baby laid in a glass coffin and everyone was welcome to look at it and take pictures to note that the child was in fact white. It was an entire rumor that the government had made up, entirely fabricated solely to discredit this woman for her activism, and in the eyes of the public, it kind of worked. Jean later ended up going through a terrible life. This, this one part completely derailed all of her success. She ended up committing suicide outside of her Paris apartment because she couldn't take the weight of this instance anymore. She had gone crazy. The government had ruined her life. 
Jean's story is not the only one like this. The counterintelligence program ran for years without being investigated and without anyone blinking, it, batting an eye at it. It was so underground, they had no idea. The columnist who even leaked Jean's story didn't know that it was the government who had given it to her. The church committee investigated the counterintelligence program in 1971, and they found that they had been violating numerous Americans' constitutional right to privacy. In the eyes of the committee, it was terrible and disgusting, and the pro program was shut down then in 1971. However, this does not put an end to government surveillance. Counterintelligence programs since then have sparked up. While the main one targeted people like Martin Luther King Jr., Muhammad Ali, and Malcolm X, and even Gene, now government surveillance hides its program. It's not some sort of fancy title. There's no big informant thing. There's no, there's no real publicity about it because of the FISA courts. The FISA courts are part of the American court system that allows the government to obtain a warrant for anyone or anything without the subject of the warrant knowing. If the government sees that it's fit that they be investigated or they be surveillanced or their property be violated, like, uh, the, the government can snoop through their property, their phone, whatever it is, it can happen. The subject of the warrant doesn't need to be notified. So the government could be watching you without you even knowing. Now, this isn't to terrify you, make you some sort of anti-government conspiracy theorist, but rather to raise your level of awareness. Jean was targeted because of her activism, because she was a public figure making bold strokes against the, against the status quo. American politics today is full of people like Jean, full of people being discredited, being mocked in our American system. Where are they getting that information from? Why are they being mocked? Who knows?